what is air air is a mixture of various gases the main gases present in the air are oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide and water vapor air contains about 21% oxygen oxygen is important for all living organisms both plants and animals make use of atmospheric oxygen in the process of respiration we breathe in air rich in oxygen the oxygen from the air is absorbed by the blood in the lungs the hemoglobin present in the blood carries this oxygen to all parts of the body this oxygen oxidizes the food in the body tissues and provides us energy fish utilize oxygen dissolved in water a person climbing on high mountains or a deep sea diver carries cylinders of oxygen with them Nitrogen forms about 4 fifths of the total atmospheric air. Nitrogen does not help in burning. However, roots of some plants like bean, pea and pulses have root nodules that bear some bacterial cells. These bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into soil fertilizers. This process is known as biological nitrogen fixation. Very little carbon dioxide is present in the atmosphere. All plants and animals give out carbon dioxide in the process of respiration. Let us perform an activity to check the presence of carbon dioxide in the air we breathe out. Take a test tube and add some lime water in it. Breathe out some air into the lime water with the help of a straw. The lime water turns milky. This activity shows that the air we breathe out contains carbon dioxide and the lime water turns milky. due to the formation of calcium carbonate on burning of coal and wood carbon dioxide is produced plants use carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis carbon dioxide is also used in the making of aerated drinks it is also used in fire extinguishers because it does not burn and helps put off a fire water vapors present in air are very important for the water cycle in nature To see the presence of water vapor in air, let us perform an experiment. Take a glass and put some ice cubes in it. Leave it for some time. What do you observe? Some drops of water form on the outside of the glass. From where do these drops of water come from? Water vapors present in air when come in contact with a cold surface deposit as water droplets. This shows presence of water vapor in air. properties of air let us perform some activities to learn about the properties of air activity 1 take a bottle and invert it in a bucket full of water press the bottle gradually in the water observe what happens the water does not enter the bottle even on pressing this happens because the bottle is not empty air is present inside the bottle now tilt the bottle slightly still keeping it inverted Observe the air bubbles escape out of the bottle and water enters the bottle. The bottle will be completely filled with water when there is no air inside. This activity proves that air occupies space. Activity 2. Air does not have a definite shape. Let us prove it. Fill air in a cycle tube. Air takes the shape of the cycle tube. If air is filled in an inflated balloon or air mattresses or football bladder or swimming tube it takes their shape respectively this shows that air does not have a definite shape it takes the shape of the container in which it is present activity 3 take a glass and keep it close to your mouth suck the air in the mouth from the glass remove your hands the glass remains pressed to the mouth now release your breath the glass will fall down Why does it happen? 
This is because when the air inside the glass has been sucked, the air from outside exerts pressure over the glass and keeps it fitted to the mouth. This proves that air exerts pressure. This property of air is used in the working of an eyedropper, in filling ink in fountain pen, a doctor's syringe and a pichkari used on holi. A doctor's syringe or a pichkari has a piston. When this piston is moved forward, the air inside the syringe goes out. Then the nozzle or the tip is dipped in the medicine and the piston is pulled back. The liquid enters the syringe. By using this principle, one can empty a bucket full of water without lifting it. This is done by making a siphon. Take a glass tube with two bends. Now take a bucket full of water and keep it at a higher place. Take another empty bucket and keep it at a lower place. Now place the shorter arm of the tube in the water filled bucket and longer arm of the tube in the empty bucket. Suck out the air from the tube and fill it with water. Keep both ends of the tube dipped in the water. The water starts flowing into the empty bucket. Activity 4 Take two balloons of the same size. Blow both the balloons equally. Tie the balloons on the two sides of a stick. Tie a thread in the center of the stick and hold it. Try to balance the balloon by moving them along the stick. Now puncture one of the balloon so that air moves out. You will find that the balloons are not balanced anymore. The balloon with air is heavier than the deflated balloon. This activity shows that air has weight. Do you know that air can crush things? You do not believe me. Let me show you. Take some boiling water and pour it into a plastic bottle using a funnel. Do not fill it completely, just a little less than half the bottle. Cap it tightly. Now pour cold water over the bottle and watch it get crushed. What happened here? When the boiling hot water was poured into the bottle, the steam pushed some of the air out. At the same time, the air above the water surface was heated and hence expanded. This also pushed some of the air out and the amount of air inside the bottle reduced. Then when we capped the bottle, the air could not enter back in. Finally, when we poured cold water over the bottle, the steam condensed to water and the air cooled and contracted. This led to lowering of air pressure inside the bottle. As the air pressure inside the bottle fell significantly below the pressure exerted by the air on the outside, the walls crashed in. Air in the pneumatic tires in our bicycle or cars exert pressure on the walls of the tires from inside. This introduces cushioning effect and thus absorbs the shocks generated due to rough texture of the road. Ride a bicycle up a slope using a tire filled with air and ride up the same slope without air in the tires. Can you feel the difference? That is the difference made by the air pressure. As I was sipping this drink using the straw, the atmospheric pressure was pushing the drink into my mouth. Sounds a little counterintuitive. Let us try to understand atmospheric pressure. For that, we need a beaker with colored water and some thick straws. We will dip a thick straw in the colored water. Cover the open end of the straw with the finger and lift the straw out of the water. Observe the straw. Does the water in it trickle out? No. Water remains inside the straw. Now release the finger from this end. You will see that the water falls down. The atmosphere exerts a pressure on all the objects, which is known as atmospheric pressure. When the top of the straw is closed, the atmospheric pressure can no longer act on the liquid from the top, but will continue to act on the water from below. The pressure 
acting on the water from below is higher than that from above. This pressure will push at the water and keep it from falling down. When the finger is lifted, the pressure of the air acting at both ends of the liquid in the straw again become equal, so gravity pulls down the water. Now can you guess how this drink rises through the straw to my mouth? When I suck the air out of the straw, the atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure that is, pushes the drink into my mouth, like this. Now you get it? Have you seen videos or pictures of strong winds blowing away the rooftops of a hut? Do you know why does the roof blow up? Let us understand this through an activity. We have two balloons tied with strings and stuck at a height. What will happen if you blow between the balloons? Let's take a look. Unlike what we expect, the balloons actually come together and stick to each other when air is blown between them. Why did this happen? When air is blown between the balloons, the air starts moving at a higher speed than the air around it. Daniel Bernoulli has explained that a fast-moving air exerts lower pressure on any object than static air. Air is flowing between the balloons, air on the farther sides is static. Hence, pressure between the balloons is lower than the pressure on the farther sides of the balloons. This pushes the balloons inside, making them stick to each other. When strong winds blow, air moves at a high speed, which reduces the pressure on rooftops. The air inside the hut remains at high pressure and hence starts pushing the roof. And if the roof is not fixed properly, it will be blown up and fly away in the strong wind. एक आपण दुसरा एक प्रयोग करून बघूया मी एक स्ट्रॉ घेतलेली आहे छोट्या आकाराची स्ट्रॉ आहे तिला मधोमध काप द्यायचं आहे याचे दोन तुकडे केलेले आहेत मी आणि या ग्लासमध्ये घेतलेल्या पाण्यामध्ये एक स्ट्रॉ बुडवायची आहे दोन्ही स्ट्रॉ स्ट्रॉ काटकोनात धरून मी याला फुंकर मारतोय बघूया काय होते तर आपण बघितलं आहे की या स्ट्रॉमधून मी जोराने फुंकर मारल्यामुळे हवा गतिमान झाली त्यामुळे काय झालं की तेथे हवेचा दाब कमी निर्माण झाला आणि खालील स्ट्रॉमधील पाणी हवेसोबत वर आला आणि या स्ट्रॉमधून फुंकर मारल्यामुळं त्या हवेच्या गतीमुळं त्याचा फवारा उडाला यावरून आपल्याला बर्नोली यांचं प्रिन्सिपल सिद्ध करता येते की हवेचा वेग वाढला असता हवेचा दाब कमी होतो धन्यवाद सम ऑफ द कॉमन क्वेश्चन दॅट किड्स आस्क आर Why is the sky blue while the clouds aren't? Why is the sun yellow? And why does it turn reddish orange during sunrise and sunset? These questions might look difficult to answer at first. However, the physics behind them is not difficult at all. There are two things that play an important role in giving a color to the sky. One is the atmosphere of the earth and the other is the sunlight of course. So we need to know more about these two first. The white light coming from the sun is a mixture of seven primary colors and each colored light has a corresponding frequency and wavelength associated with it. The violet colored light has the shortest wavelength of all while the red one has the largest wavelength. And what forms the earth's atmosphere? The earth's atmosphere is mainly composed of gases, dust particles, water droplets and water vapor. Among the gases Nitrogen is present in abundant quantity at around 78%. It is followed by oxygen which is approximately 21% and the remaining is filled with the likes of argon, carbon dioxide and other gases. First, let's see what happens when the sunlight falls on these air molecules. When sunlight strikes these molecules, it gets scattered. Scattering is a process in which the light is absorbed by the atoms. and re-emitted back in various directions. So this was about how the gases present in the atmosphere scatter light. Do dust particles and water droplets also scatter light? Yes, they do. They scatter light as well. 
However, their size is comparatively much bigger than the size of the light waves. And hence they scatter all the colors of light in equal amounts. So the white light which is entering the cloud or the dust particles emerges out as white light again. Hence the clouds appear white.